Welcome back. When you register a new user, you're going to store their email address. Now, if the user was to type something in incorrectly, you'd want to let them know right away so they could fix it. So we're going to take the email address that they give us. We're going to check to see if it's a valid email address, if it's an email address that can actually exist. And if so, we're going to go ahead and send them an email that they're going to use to verify that, yes, they do have access to that email account. Now this this video is going to look at validation. So we're going to see if the email address can actually exist. So we're going to have our email address and we're going to make sure that syntactically that yes, the local part, which is this first part of the email address can be, uh, can be what they've given us. And of course, we're going to have to have our at symbol as well. We're also going to check to see if it's a valid, you know, syntactically uh, domain name. And if that's all true, we're going to go ahead and check to see if this host, uh, that's the email server that's hosting this email address, uh, actually exists by looking at the MX record. So let's go ahead and take a look at email address uh, syntax. So we're here on Wikipedia at email address. And if we go down to syntax, and like I said, the local part is this first part of the email address. So there's different rules on it. So it can be from A to Z, uh, upper, uh, sorry, capital A through Z, capital lower, or lowercase a through Z, zero through nine, and any of these printable characters. So we're going to be using regular expressions to s make sure that it's only these type of characters there for the local part. And like I said, you also have, there's also some ret restrictions in the size of it as well. But the second part after the at symbol is the domain. So it could be like example.com, uh, for instance. And this has some rules as well, um, uppercase and lowercase Latin letters, you know, A through Z and uppercase A through Z and lowercase A through Z, digits, you know, zero to nine. And you can have a hyphen, hyphen provided it's not the first or last character of that domain. But anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at our our code. So we're going to be using regular expressions. So we're going to be using the reg exp package. And our first part, if we're going to take this regular expression here and we're going to comp we're going to go ahead and use the must compile. So if it fails, it's just going to go ahead and stop the whole application. And we're going to check to see we're going to go, uh, it's going to go ahead and parse this regular expression so that into our email regular expression uh, variable here so we can use it with methods that it has. So we're going to go ahead and use must compile to go ahead and parse our regular expression. And I got a list of email addresses that we're going to go ahead and test. And then we're going to go ahead and range through those email addresses. And then we're going to remember with this. Uh, variable email regular expression. We're going to use this match string to see if it, uh, if we get a true or a false back. Remember that this is a, a boolean to see if it passes this regular expression test. And then we're also going to go ahead and make sure that it's within the length that it can be. And then finally, we're going to go ahead and print this. So uh, notice we're using f print print line here. Um, just so this prints out a little bit nicer, I'm just giving it my own uh, writer filter, our own writer. And with tab writer, um, I have another video for that if you want to go ahead and check that out. It's really nice for if you have uh, data that would look well as a, as a table, for instance. It helps create columns. Um, anyway, with the writer, just in review, um, just using the uh, operating system standard out, which is the terminal. And then, you know, we're uh, giving it a minimum width and you know some padding so everything's spaced out and of course we're going to do that extra spacing with just uh, you know blank spaces. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and print all those out and we're going to let it know if uh, you know if it you know passed if it failed you know what was the length and then one thing if you're using that tab writer uh, got to make sure that you go ahead and flush the buffer at the end just so it's all cleared out. So let's go ahead and take a look 
at the regular expression that we're going to be using. So just as some notes, here's the, the regular expression, same one is up there. So this here, this is just simply our, you know, start a line and I'm just going to put this in here so you can see uh, on our search functionality, if you click on the use regular expression, it'll show you all the things that qualify. So there's obviously all, all new lines all the way to the top. And if we have this little chunk here, um, this here is a character class that's telling us the things that it could be. Remember when we were talking about, and this is for, let me just go ahead and punch it in there so you can see it. So we have three different valid email addresses. So this is checking to see if we have a, a valid uh, local part of our email address. So this here is a character class and it's telling the different things that we can have in there. Remember that we went over, we were looking at Wikipedia, it said, hey, lowercase a through z, uppercase a through z, zero through nine, and then, hey, these printable characters right here, you know, these, these can also uh, be used. As you can see, all three of these are lining up even, like I said, these weird printable characters can technically be in an email address. And of course, we have to have our at symbol to separate the local part and the host. And then, of course, we have another uh, character class here uh, saying, hey, at the start of our domain, it has to be uppercase or lowercase a through z, and are either 0 through 9. So let me go ahead and just plug that in. Okay, as you can see, we have the first letter of all of our domains. If we had one uh, that wasn't one of these, it would not work. And then finally, if we plug this in, um, and this one here is a quantifier. It's just telling how, how long our uh, domain can be because, yes, there is a limit to how long that can be. Let's go ahead and just grab that. Oh, and this one's can't have that. Okay, and as you can see, so syntactically, we're just checking to make sure that, yes, the local part, our and symbols there, and also our host are all correct. Um, I got a, a video on regular expressions. I'm not going to dive any deeper than this for this one, but just as a brief little overview. So again, we're going to use we're going to go ahead and parse our regular expression. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. And so I'm in the regular expression package. And notice this regular expression uh, uh, data type. Go ahead and take a look at that. You know, is a struct, but it has many, many different methods here. So we're going to be using this function must compile because it returns this data type, and then we'll have access to all of these different uh, methods. And let's go back to our, our code. So we'll compile that back. We'll get back that struct that gives us access to all those different methods. And then, like I said, we're going to go ahead and range through our list of emails. And then for each one of those, we're going to go ahead and use that, that struct that we created, use the match string function. And let's pull that up. And match string reports whether the string contains any match of the regular expression. So we're going to look to see if, yes, it does qualify or no, it doesn't. Does it match that, re does it qualify? Do we find a match for that, uh, for that regular expression that we have parsed into our, regu our uh, email back to that. We have a match with the regular expression that we have parsed in here, that we parsed from up here. So we're either going to get a true or false, and then down here uh, we're going to go ahead and check the length as well, because the length can only be uh, between a certain, can only, it can't be less than three because, you know, because you're going to have to have a dot and a 
uh, or, you know, for your domain, like it's a .com or .whatever. And then, of course, it can't be too long either. So we're going to go ahead and check for both of those. And then we're going to go ahead and print both of those off. And I said, like I said, we're going to use the our own uh, writer filter so that way we can make it look nice and organized. So go ahead and run that. Okay, so I put in those nice little columns. And of course, this line here is just our title that came up here, uh, make our little printout look a little bit nicer. So did it pass the regular expression? Yes, it has all these different uh, printable characters in it. Yes, it can have a you know zero through nine. Um, that is perfectly fine. And all these have the correct length. Now, if I go back up here, uh, I went ahead and just commented this one out just so you could see that yes, you can't have something ridic ridiculously long, uh, but if I would allow that one to go through, it would fail, but it would also throw off all my columns because it's just, when it prints that one out, it would be exceptionally long. Uh, anyway, and of course, Jane Doe at email.com, you know, yes, syntactically that is correct. And then same thing with this one, because yes, we said, you know, uppercase and lowercase are just fine. Yes, you can have you can have a dot in the middle. That's fine. You can have a hyphen in the middle. That is also fine. And yeah, if you could get a hold of an email address, that's just one letter. I would be pretty sure they're all taken from what most uh, email servers anyway. Uh, yeah, that's perfectly fine as well. And of course, yes, we do have to have the uh, at symbol. And then this one here, you can't have a, a semicolon because no, it's not one of those uh, printable characters. And, you know, and like we said here, this one comes back false because, you know, at, at .com, you know, you can't have a hyphen, you know, at the start there. And of course, you can't have it at the end either. You can't have one of these guys back there as well because remember looking at our regular expression, it was saying, no, you can't, uh, you can't have one of those there. And same thing with exclamation point, you know, you know, and a plus symbol. Went ahead and just left some notes here off to the side so that way if you, you know, if you wanted to look at it a little bit further, you could. So that's checking syntactically if the local part and the host are correct. Now we also want to make sure that even if they type in syntactically, a host name that could exist, we want to make sure that there is actually a host before we shoot off an email. So we have two different email addresses. One of them I'm pulling uh, from my uh, system variable, and the other one here is one I've created that doesn't actually exist. So not uh, oh, I think it's supposed to be not is or no, this is not a, a or not a domain. So there is no server domain uh, with that name. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and use the strings uh, package, use the index function to find you know where this is in the string, the at symbol, because we just want to check the host. We don't want to bother with the local part or the at the at sign. And we're just going to go ahead and print that off so you can see the index. And then the host is just the address. And then we're just going to go ahead and slice that. So just one more. And then again, there's no number here. It goes to the very end of that, that slice or that string, which is a slice, slice a byte. And then oh, we're going to go ahead and just print the host. Let's just go ahead and run that. Okay, so it was index 7, and we were able to slice just the host off of there. And then we come down here inside the net package. We're going to use the lookup mx host. Let's take a look at that function real quick. Now, the net package has a whole bunch of different uh, functions. So we're going to go ahead and use this one. It uh, returns. Um, MX and error, we're just uh, concerned with error on this one. 
and look at lookup mx returns the dns mx records for the given domain name sorted by reference so we're going to make sure it has an mx record that yes this is a server you know a server that exists and if not we would go ahead and handle the error and tell the user like hey this you can't find this domain please double check it for us please and here we're just printing it off at the end as you can see um, the error that we are getting says look up you know this is not a domain.com uh, dns core dns name does not exist now let's go ahead and change this around to use one that does okay so we're able to slice off the host which is proton mail and we got nil which means that we did not get an error so that shows that yes there is an mx record for that one and it does exist so in review you want to make sure you let the user know right away if uh, they type something incorrectly that way they can fix it and just make the registration process that much smoother so in review yeah we're just we're parsing our regular expression you know, and then we're going to be using that to see if we find a match for all the different ones and if not then we're going to let the user know like hey this is not a valid uh you know, not a valid email address please double check it please you know and then eventually uh, we're also going to go ahead and double check uh, the host syntax as well as if there's an mx record so we know if that server does actually exist so anyway i like to uh uh, a lot of people have been sharing my stuff on, on different platforms, so really thank you very much for that. Um, really does help me out. Uh, appreciate all you, the new subscribers. You guys are um, glad you guys are enjoying the stuff. Uh, it's your first time seeing this. Uh, you enjoyed it. You like it. Uh, you know, go ahead and subscribe. Really does help me out. I really do appreciate it. So uh, I'll see you guys in the next one, and have a good day.